I had to call my mother. And I told her what had happened. She came and got me. And then after she came and got you, uh, what happened after that? She did, did she take you immediately back home where he was at? Or did she try to run off with you? No, she uh, took me straight to the hospital. And uh, well, hold on, Jackie. It's a little bit of feedback on your on your mic a little bit. Okay. Let me see if I can fix that. I, th I think that's better. So you're saying she took you to the hospital and what happened at the hospital? Uh, they found out that I was pregnant. And at that time you were 12? I was 12 years old. And being a 12 year old, having a doctor look at you, and again, to 12 years old, that's not even, your, your body's not even a woman. You're still a little girl. You know, probably not even, most 12 years don't even have, well, back then, weren't developed. Um, when the doctor looked at you and told you that you were pregnant, having a baby inside of you, and what, what went through your head at 12 years old? At 12 years old, finding out that you're going to have a baby, I was terrified. I didn't know what to think. I just knew that at 12, I was going to have a baby. And you knew who it was from? Yeah. Wow. There was only one person that it could be from. And so what happened in the hospital? Uh, what was the conversation? What? Well, what happened next after that news came out that you were pregnant? Did your mom ask you who the father was or did she know immediately? She knew immediately. She mm. knew. And because I'm your sister and I know, you know, about a little bit about your life, uh, what happened to the baby that was in, in what that was inside of what happened uh my mother had it aborted and when that process happened were they telling you step by step what was what they were doing to your body or did they just basically as an adult the, the your mom and the doctor and the nurses did they just basically didn't tell you anything and just took you to the room and and perform this procedure well the uh doctors and nurses they didn't really tell me anything uh my mother talked to me she told me what was gonna happen i guess they told her what was gonna happen and she talked to me and uh I had the procedure done. And it was it was very painful. It was very terrifying. And I thought I was gonna die. I didn't know what was going on. I just knew that at the end it was gonna be no more baby. So after you left the hospital, did you go back home where he was at? Yes. And was yes. he there when you got there? Yes. Oh my he goodness. Was there, he was there packing up all his clothes, all his belongings. He was running. Because he knew he was caught. He knew he was caught and he was running. 
Did he look at you and go ahead? Uh, Did your mother call the police or anything? No. No, the police were never called. But your mother had a conversation with him prior to you coming back home. I guess she did. I don't know. She must have. He was packing up and moving out. Hmm. So, so did he say anything to you or was it just a kind of quiet, kind of weird type of vibe? It was one of those quiet, weird type of vibes. He never even looked at me. He was running so fast. It's just trying to get away. And and what what was your mother's reaction at this time while he's trying to get out? Is she helping him get out, or is she about to put her foot to him, or how did that uh, uh, take place? She mostly just stayed with me. She didn't uh, do any cussing or fussing or fighting or foot stomping. She just stayed with me and she let him move out. It was one of those things that were just kind of hid under the rug. You know what I mean? Right, so what what was her instructions to you concerning talking about it uh, again? Uh, There was no instructions. I just knew not to talk about it. So not to to try to tell everybody your age, but around what what, uh, year was this? This was back in the 70s, early 70s. Okay, so now he's he's out of the house. Mm-hmm. You went to the doctor. You're no longer pregnant. Now, your youngest sister, which is his mm-hmm. child, is still in the house. Was mm-hmm. he able to see her or was he just gone out of your your guys' life? Oh, he was able to see her. He would come and pick her up. I would see him all the time. It's just the fact that when he would show up, I would leave. You know, he never came and hung out. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He just came and picked up his daughter and he left. Mm. He, he, for the most part, he stayed away from me. Except he would make crazy phone calls to me. threatening me, saying crazy things that he would do to me if he ever caught me. And did you share that with your mom? Yeah. I don't think she believed me, though. Hmm. So uh, I know now you've been you have three boys. And you, you've been married for a long, long time. Um, how has what happened all the way back then, how has it affected your life now? And um, this is kind of personal, so if you don't want to answer this, it's okay. When you met your husband, did you tell him this? How was his reaction and how has he helped you with your healing process? When I met my husband, yes, I explained to him everything that happened to me. Mm -hmm. And my husband's a great man. He was patient with me. He was very understanding. He, as you can see, we've been together, as you said, a long, long, long time. You know, he had to be okay for me to still be with him. 
to be for me to be with him period he had to be okay because uh when it came to me and I basically shied away from him. You know, it was very few that could get next to me. And he was the one. Hmm. That's sweet. That's sweet. So the person who did this to you never did any jail time behind you or our brother, right? Never. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, he passed away a little while ago. He passed away a lot of while ago. Mm -hmm. Yes, he died in the 80s. Oh, wow. I didn't know it was that long ago. Yes. So, in parents that are listening to this, uh, um, fathers and mothers, um, what message would you give them to their children? And not just little girls, but little boys too. What, what would you tell them from what has happened to you about their children? I would tell them to talk to their children. To always talk to their children, to let their children know that there's nothing that they can come and talk to them about that's... Uh, that their parents are going to get upset about. You know, to be able to talk to your children and have your children come and talk to you. You know, a lot of times children don't want to come and talk to their parents. You know, you have to have that line of communication with your children and let them know that this kind of thing happens to children. And, and if it happens, to not be afraid, tell somebody, tell everybody. Because the people that do this to children, they're all cowards. As soon as you tell somebody, they run, they hide. They try to get away. <clears throat> You know, they're only uh, scary to little children. Hmm. Have, have you and your, your brother been able to talk about um, your experiences? No, my brother does not talk about this at all. My brother from this has... Uh, had really bad problems dealing with this. So no, you know, black men, they don't talk about this. Right. How, how old was your brother when this was happening? I'm the eldest. So my brother was five. <clears throat> wow. So I know a part of your um, your healing process is not keeping your mouth closed when it comes to this. To I, I have to say you're you're fearless when it comes to letting people know what happened to you. You know, versus some women will won't say wouldn't say anything, or they'd only say something if it's um, if it's necessary. Um, you telling people and not being afraid of their reaction, um, would you say that that was the, the greatest uh, thing to help you in your, uh, in your surviving this? Uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because the more I tell it, the more it's going to be known what's happening and maybe uh, it won't happen to any more children. You know, I can let it be known that this happens. So, 
so I have one more question for you and I'll see if the other panel members have any questions. One more question before we open this up. Um, do you think men like, like him could be rehabilitated and somehow can have some type of treatments where they could be okay in society? I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know if they could. Like I said, he's the boogeyman. People that do this to children, I don't, I don't think they can. No, I think they should all be sent away somewhere. I agree with you. I, I don't think they can be rehabilitated, rehabilitated either. I was listening to uh, um, AM radio many years ago, and it was this man who called in anonymous. Um, and I, I just recently found out that a pedophile and a molester are two different things. I guess a pedophile is a person who has the thoughts of messing with the child, and a molester is a person who actually acts on it. So this guy, I'm not sure which one he is. He, he had thing for children. He called in and said, there's no way to make a person like me better. You can do whatever you want to do. I will always have this thought of being with the child. And if I have an opportunity, I will absolutely do it again. So I don't think that there is rehabilitation for these people. And I agree with you. They should find an island somewhere in the middle of some ocean, drop them off and let them fend for themselves. Um, so uh, Taki, Sabir, do you have any questions before we open this up to just a full, full fledged discussion about this? Um, I was going to say before uh, King Sabir got on is um, a real very scary thought about what the sister just said right there that there's no rehabilitation. My mind instantly goes to people who are uh, leaders in certain parts of our uh, government and economy and uh, our living situation that have that disease. And um, um, wow, we really need to think about what needs to be done. If that's not a, a curable disease, we can't have people like that making decisions on uh, the life and future of these children that we're trying to protect. Go on here, brother. That's real. I agree with that. I, I, I agree with that. There's many uh, documentaries and there's many whistleblowers that uh, came out and pulled this sheet off even our government with this human sex trafficking thing going on where a lot of uh, people in our community are getting kidnapped. A lot of black women are coming up missing and they're not even uh, putting it on the news or putting an alert out for it. So it's big business behind this as well. Definitely. So, Definitely. Yeah, it's crazy. And I uh, I have to comment on the fact that she said black men don't talk about this. There's a lot of, uh, you know, black men being molested and stuff like that too. And they don't have no venues or in our culture, it's looked at like a sign of weakness or something when you come out and speak out about something. Uh, so, you know, in, in, in my case personally, you know, I had an uncle that was, you know, that was a pedophile. You know, he never really, he never really uh, did anything to me, but he used to like try to give me baths and stuff like that. Wow. Uh, he kicked my brother on the lips. And no. I remember one time he was playing strip poker with a, uh, 13, uh, 13 year old boy at our house and you know we watching it and he's making it seem like it's just a fun game and we all all watching it so it was some uh you know it was some weird stuff and uh he actually got he actually got his ass beat by my uncle because he touched my cousin and he told my cousin uh if you say anything about it 
I'm going to beat your ass. So he told his dad about it. And his dad came over there and beat the hell out of him. But, yeah, he was weird. And it's crazy that, you know, I had people in my family. I have some people in my family, especially the women, who won't talk about it. Like, my grandmother won't talk about the fact that he's a pedophile. But this is a grown man with toys, always keeping toys and stuff in his room at my grandma's house, just weird stuff. So I believe in our community, man, we got to start punishing people in our community, even if it's family members. It's okay to talk about a pedophile or a rapist if it's not your family member. So we got to start uh, bringing more awareness, awareness and shedding more light on this situation. Yeah, but that's my piece on it. I think it's 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 real complicated though at the ages, uh, like the sister she was six and the the son was five. I mean the, the brother was five. Um, you know I I I I've witnessed some traumatizing stuff at that age where I had to actually witness uh, somebody uh, 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 performing an act on a child um, at that age. But I was so uh, paranoid of this person halfway killing me that I, I, I held that secret uh, as well. So we have to be aware of that impressionable age that that child is at too. And we uh, somehow we have to come up with some kind of protection plan because at that age, it's so easy to intimidate them that it's going to be the end of the world. If you, if you open your mouth on this, it's going to be the end of the world. And that, you know, for, for years, you got that, that mouth shut for a long time. Right. Yeah, I think um, what and what I I think a lot of people don't even realize that women molest and young girls molest. In my family, I was molested by my my cousin. I don't remember remember how old I was. I know I was in elementary school, and she probably was in middle school. Um, and my mom allowed us to play together because she was a girl and she had me and her sister doing things that we shouldn't be doing and the only thing i could think about was someone must have taught her right. you know and so that's something to watch also when you're letting your your daughters go play with their older cousins or older older kids of the same sex you got to be aware of that too um and I mean, and then there's things that you just can't prevent your child from ha from happening. Like, for instance, um, I would think I was probably around nine or eight. I went with my dad to an RV um, sales lot. And I remember my dad was walking up the stairs to the RV and this older Santa Claus looking white man who's a salesman was behind us, you know, um, open, you know, going behind us. And so it was my dad going up, me and him. And every time my dad was turning, this man was putting his hands on my butt right in front of my dad. He did it about two, three times, grabbing no. me in front of my, my, my dad is like right here. No. You know, and I was terrified because I'm like, if I said something, my dad's going to go to jail. He's going to knock him out. And so I just, as a little girl, I tried to, I push position myself where I was never next to that man. I mean, how bold is that? My dad is less than three, four feet away. Only thing it is, is his head was turned and this man was touching me. Mm -hmm. So I think the best thing to do is to open up the dialogue with your child and really make an environment to let them know, if you tell me, I will stop this from happening. Right. You know, and also a good pointer is to talk to your child about not just saying, you know, if someone touched you in your private part, age appropriate now, you know, saying penis, saying vagina, saying, you know, your butt. So if something happens, they can say, someone touched me in my vagina or on top of my vagina. And also letting children know that it's not just adults or other kids touching them. It's also sometimes some molesters start off with the kids touching the molester, you know, and the kid might not think it's something weird because it's not hurting them. They're just putting their hand on certain places. So all of that, and also paying attention to kids' behaviors, if the behaviors change. Um, and as an adult, like I've had, I've had sexual abuse done to me, even beyond those two stories I tell you. And I, and I shared with my daughter, because I feel that if sharing that with my daughter, if it happened to her 
hopefully she's comfortable enough to tell me because it happened to me too versus me holding it and being a secret as uh, as her mother and she thinks that she's on an island by herself if it happens which i'm you know praying that it doesn't but it's it happens so much and it was, they say it's um, 100, 250,000 cases of girls being raped that are b of birthing age in this country. I say take that number times three because a lot of those cases are never reported. Right. I would say maybe even take it times four. That's a lot of women, girls being raped. And they say uh, 7,000 girls per year have a baby by, that was brought on by rape. Again, times that by four. So we have an issue and in our, in our black community, we need to stop keeping our mouth closed. And if something happens to our child, we need to persecute. It doesn't matter if it's a child's father, it doesn't matter if it's a child's grandfather or the child's grandmother. We need to do something to let our children know that they're gonna be safe. Right. Most definitely. Mm-hmm. So um, we almost at the, the end of our, our segment here. Um, I know if uh, King Sabir had more questions uh, for our guests tonight, we want to thank our guest, uh, Jackie. What, what was your last name again, Jackie? I'd rather not say my last name. Okay, that's fine. Just Jackie, y'all. So we appreciate you coming on the show and, and sharing that. I know even uh, to this day, it's, it's something hard to share because it's just, it's not something that's normal. Um, but we grow up thinking that is normal for so many years, messes up our, our, our thinking patterns on certain things in other areas just because we didn't get that part right, that we, we uh, end up uh, uh, imagining the world to be a different kind of way, and uh, it does stick with you. So definitely, uh, I appreciate your courage to share with us on here uh, tonight, your experience. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Jackie, for coming on here. You're welcome. And that being said, um, Brother Sabir, did you have anything or um, closing uh, statements from the Queen? Uh, no, I didn't have any closing statements. I just want to say thank you uh, for sharing your story and bringing more light on this situation. Uh, the work that you're doing is very much needed in the community and don't think of it as something small this is something big like what you're doing can help save a lot of people and can help uh spread awareness you know if you could save one child you did your job so i'm grateful for you Absolutely. thank you yeah thank you and i hope that it did even if it's just one child mm -hmm. Right, uh, Leslie Hunter in our audience mentioned, uh, we have to open up that line of communication and make kids feel comfortable enough to talk to not only uh, their parents, but teachers or anyone that they, uh, that they feel safe with. True. Um, Sister Benita Wilson also chimed in that some children don't know if they were raped or at infants because their memories are suppressed. So definitely some things to take into consideration. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I didn't even see all the, I didn't even see all the comments. I think I didn't know people were commenting. Thank you for everyone who's com who commented on, uh, on this show. Thank you. And please, uh, again, this is a huge problem that we have in our community. So please share this, um, this uh this message share this um yeah just share just share as much as you can um even if you think people it doesn't apply to someone you never know because this is like a huge secret in our community so share talk about it um if if anybody if this has happened to anyone and you need to talk to someone hit me up on facebook um maisha mini hats i don't mind giving you my phone number and chatting with you if it's something that you just need to get off your chest and tell tell somebody i could be those ears um and and yeah yeah let's just keep it we gotta we gotta uh, expose this 
Most definitely. Yes. So that being said, um, we will have new eyes to see come in uh, next week, Absolutely. next Monday, same time, uh, mm -hmm. eight o'clock Pacific Standard Time, um, Mondays. Tomorrow we have the truth changes the narrative, I believe, on schedule. Wednesday, connected minds. Uh, Thursday, um, the rhymes and rhythm of the Metu Natter. And then Frequency Friday on Friday, y'all. So that being said, we appreciate everybody for tuning in. Uh, definitely uh, sitting with us through this, this hard subject. And it's definitely uh, a hard uh, subject because of our unfamiliarity with the subject and our uncomfortableness uh, with sharing the subject. So uh, definitely, I think we, we got something accomplished here by just talking about it tonight and allowing the sister to come on and open up to uh, her experience with the subject as well. So that being said, we appreciate everybody uh, tuning in tonight. Thank you for joining us. Absolutely. Wawa, good night. Good night, everyone. Good night.